What is going on guys? I'm going to show you how to make a pretty sweet looking thumbnail which is simple to make and looks great. Let's get started. Let's make a new project. Make sure your width is 1280 and height is 720. Once that's done, hit OK. Next, let's unlock the background layer by double clicking on it and hitting OK. This will just let you modify the background if needed. Next, click on File, then Open, and find a random background you want to use for your thumbnail. Drag the background on the thumbnail project. Next, we want to resize the background so it fits perfectly well over the background layer. To do this, click Ctrl T and hold Shift while dragging a corner to keep it from stretching. Alright, so now we're going to find a render of a player from Overwatch. Since I'm making an Overwatch thumbnail, you can simply search game name render to find a bunch of characters from the game you play without the background. This allows you to add that character onto your current background without cutting him out from another background. Once you guys have found your character, open him up and drag him onto your background layer. Place him anywhere you would like and resize him if necessary. Now let's add some text related to your video. Click the T and click anywhere on the background to start writing. You can change the font in the top right if you would like. I'm just going to write thumbnail tutorial. Make sure thumbnail has its own text layer and tutorial has its own text layer too. You can do this by clicking the mouse icon at the top, which is the first icon, and then click on the text icon again to write another word. Adjust it how you would like. You can change the size and the font from the top tools. Make sure that the text icon is selected in order to see the same tools I see. Now let's change the text color. Right click on one of your text layers and click blending options. This little box allows you to change a bunch of stuff with your text. We're going to change the color, so click on color overlay and hit the little red box. Now just choose any color you would like by dragging the circle and the arrows around the colors. Once you are satisfied, hit the OK button two times. Alright, so let's duplicate the background layer. We're going to make a cool little background for the text. Right click on the background layer and hit duplicate layer. Drag the second background layer over top of your main background, which mine is the city. We'll resize the white background to fit around the text. You can drag it by clicking Ctrl T and then holding Shift. Once it looks alright, turn the opacity down by dragging the little arrow or you can type in the number. Set it to around 75%. Next, let's change the background rectangle to a dark grey color. We can now add a stroke to make it look a little better. So click the stroke section and choose any color you would like. Set the pixels to your liking. I'm going to keep it on 4. Let's now add a shadow to the first text layer. Don't worry about the second text layer yet. Click on the drop shadow box and mess around with the distance, size, and spread to darken up the shadow. If it looks good, hit OK and now right click on the first layer and click copy layer style. Then click on the second layer and click paste layer style. Adjust the color of the second layer to how you like if needed. Now we will mess around with the character a little. You can add a drop shadow if you would like, but I'm just going to add a white stroke onto the character to kind of give it a little cooler effect so she doesn't look so plain. We can add some more text if needed. I'm going to add episode 1 as text and make it smaller just to fill up the thumbnail a little. I'm going to show you guys another simple way of adjusting this thumbnail with less strokes and more drop shadows. Let's remove the stroke from the character and remove it from the background. Now let's add a vector mask by clicking the little box with the circle in the middle. Make sure your rectangle background is selected. Once you have done that, go to the left tool section and click on the gradient tool. If you see a paint bucket instead, right click on it and you should be able to select the gradient tool. Now make sure the first gradient box is selected at the top. Now let's make a fade effect. Hold shift and drag across to the right. You will now see a cool little fade. Adjust it until it looks good and resize the text and character to make it fit better. Now let's add a drop shadow to the character since it will fit nicely with the black faded background. Now I'm going to darken up the main color layer. Go into the main background blending options and click on the inner shadow. You can mess with the distance, choke and size to your likings. You can also add a blue glow effect if you want by clicking on the inner glow instead. Select the color and mess with the size bar. Well guys, that's basically it. I'm going to include the PSD in the description if you want to download it and just rename and adjust everything right away. Well, if you have enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to leave me some feedback. I'll see you guys on the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.